Modern day Tokyo is the most populated metropolitan area in the world. With 35 million residents, Tokyo can seem overwhelming to first time visitors. Imagine how you might feel if you arrived here as a teenager from a small rural village with nothing but a dream, a dream to twist the throttle. Tokyo is world headquarters for the Honda Motor Corporation, a company literally built by that young teenager who, as he became a man, never stopped dreaming. Soichiro Honda was born in 1906 in a small village that would eventually become part of Hamamatsu, Japan. His father was a blacksmith who also repaired bicycles. Soichiro, whose first name in part means eldest son, left home when he was just 16 to spend six years as an apprentice automobile mechanic in Tokyo. He lacked a formal education, but he possessed a unique and fierce personal passion for anything with an engine. Mr. Honda was a maverick and a visionary, and even though he didn't have formal mechanical engineering training, he was a mechanical genius. In 1928, Soichiro Honda went home. Just 22 years old, he opened his own automobile repair shop and soon gained a reputation for work of the highest quality. In his spare time, Honda would modify parts from old automobiles to build his own race cars. A serious accident on a racetrack ended his promising career as a driver in 1936, but it did nothing to diminish his love and dreams of racing. World War II would change everything. In 1948, Sericio Honda risked his entire life savings, $3,200, to open the Honda Motor Company. Its initial goal, provide desperately needed cheap transportation for a country coming out of the ravages of war. Working out of a wooden shack, Sericio Honda and a few helpers wrenched small surplus gasoline engines onto bicycle frames. The basic desire of Mr. Soichiro Honda was to offer something very useful to the people, and at that time in Japan, the only means of transportation for the public was bicycles. The Honda Motor Company was in business. Its first product, the motorized bicycle, was simply called the A-Type. It didn't take long for Soichiro Honda to build what he really wanted a complete motorcycle with an engine and frame he designed and manufactured. Ironically or not, the 98cc three horsepower motorcycle was called the dream. This is the Honda Dream D and our company was established in 1948 and the very next year this model was launched to the market. The Dream E followed in 1951. It was the first Honda motorcycle with a four-stroke engine. It was amazingly fuel efficient, delivering 220 miles a gallon at speeds of up to 45 miles an hour. It became Honda's first real success in the marketplace. But that wasn't enough for the dreamer in Soricio Honda. In 1954, with his company uh, just barely in its infancy and just barely getting its financial footing, he shocked his employees by saying, well, now that we're an established motorcycle company, we're going to go racing, and we're going to win the world championship. And everybody was stunned. Soichiro Honda actually put his challenge to the motorcycle world in writing, a memo outlining his goal of winning at the world-famous Isle of Man. In 1959, Honda became the first Japanese motorcycle company to enter the Isle of Man. Two years later, Honda became the first Japanese motorcycle to win the TT, with bikes similar to the Honda RC160. At that time, Honda believed that the best way to maximize the output from the engine or the vehicle is to raise the RPM as much as possible.
The result was what came to be called Honda Music. The sound of four small cylinders firing at incredibly high speeds. The bike's red line was 14,000 RPM. Listen to this RC160, part of Honda's museum collection, as it's fired up. Today, classic Honda music can only be played for so long. The men who fired up the classic racer touch it lovingly and turn it off before the engine gets too hot. The same year Honda first entered the Isle of Man was also the year it opened its first office in the United States. Soichiro Honda was passionate not only about racing, but about becoming a major player on the world stage. And to do that, he was about to redefine what it meant to twist the throttle all across America.